The rheumatoid arthritis flare can be one of the scariest and most painful things that you as a rheumatoid arthritis patient will ever go through. Wait, wait, this is, um, it doesn't have to be so scary guys. Let's change things up. This needs to be brighter. Let's go. Yeah, it sucks and it's bad, but I'm gonna help you with my survival kit today. I'm gonna share with you my tips. The rheumatoid arthritis flare. Most likely 99.9% .9 of you have had your RA flare up. Now, what does that mean? Pain gets worse, your swelling gets worse, your mobility gets worse, meaning, you know, you lose even more mobility. Uh, you likely have some heat, redness in your joints. Now, this can happen in one of your joints, two of your joints, all of your joints. Um, if it lasts more than seven days, you want to contact your rheumatologist because he or she might want to do some tests just to make sure that there isn't something else going on. As most of you likely know, I was diagnosed with RA when I was two years old and that was just about 40 years ago. So over my 40 years of living with the disease, I have learned a few things on how to treat the flare at home. First and foremost, ice, 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 ice. Now, this is just a simple ice pack that probably came with my Humera, actually, and I always keep them on hand, not only to ice my joints if I need to, um, you know, I can work on the elbows, everywhere. The only thing I don't like about these ones is that they are not pliable in the least. They're like hard, 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 hard. So there's no give in them. What I do prefer to use is um, a bag of peas, a bag of carrots. Um, I will also put my magic bag, which is full of rice or wheat, I think. Um, I'll put it in the deep freeze and get that cold, but it doesn't freeze per se. It just gets really cold. So find what works best for you. I will put a link in the description below to some on Amazon um, that I've used that are really, really good because they, they contour really nicely to your body. So you want to use this as often as you can and leave it on for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Cover it with something so you don't get frostbite. We don't need to get in frostbite here. Um, so cover it with a cloth or whatever just to put that barrier between your skin and the ice pack. Thumbs are cold. The next thing you want to do um, is, this won't necessarily help your pain per se, but you want to keep a symptoms journal. So go pick up a, note, a notebook, anything, to jot down your symptoms in each time you're having a flare, you know, recount what joints are affected, how long it goes on. Uh, get those things down because they are handy to take to your rheumatologist for your next appointment. You want to heat things up sparingly. Now, when I talk about heating things up, um, I mean using a heat pack or some hot compress on your muscles. Ideally, it's not a great idea to put heat on an inflamed joint as it only uh, promotes more inflammation. So what I suggest is if you are going to use heat, you might find it soothing. For me, I definitely notice right away if I put heat on an inflamed joint, it just starts to throb even, even worse, but that's me. You might be different. So if you do use heat, follow it up again with your ice pack and cool that joint down. Because say, the heat does kind of help with um, relieving muscle aches and pains, definitely helps that. But as far as inflammation in the joint goes, again, throw that ice pack back on there after you're done with the heat. You wanna always end with ice. This is a uh, tip that I learned from a physiotherapist years ago. She said it's okay to heat things up a little bit, but always, always, always end with the ice. Most likely one of the things that triggers a flare for you, I know it is for me and for so many others out there, is stress. Most times the stress will have occurred like seven to, day, seven to 10 days before the flare. That was also uh, shared with me by a rheumatologist or by a physiotherapist years ago. Um, interesting fact, during the 9-11 attacks, there was a group of individuals with rheumatoid arthritis enrolled in a rheumatoid arthritis clinic at the hospital that I used to attend for my checkups. 
Anyways, the physiotherapist that I was working with at the time, you know, to help my joints and my pain, she explained to me that during those 9-11 attacks, about seven days afterwards, any of the people that were involved in the clinic, they all had flares, like within, you know, days of each other, if not some at the same time. And upon review, they were talking about what stressful things had occurred in their lives. Now, most people said, no, nothing. I can't think of anything. Until one person, it dawned on them. The 9-11 attacks had occurred a week prior to their flares. So, you know, sometimes the stress doesn't even come from our immediate world, you know, from your house, from your people that you know directly. It can be political stress. It can be, you know, environmental stresses. Anything that you find to be traumatic or stressful, most likely is going to cause a flare. So reduce your stress. Now, how do you do this? Well, I find that meditation is a huge, huge help for me. In fact, I have a video here on YouTube that I again will link to in the description where I have uploaded um, a meditation that I do and I've recorded the vocal on it so that you can listen to me guide you through just a really simple relaxation meditation. Try that for, I always say 21 days because that's how long it takes to really see and notice a difference with meditation. The next thing is an ice bath. Now, no, that does not mean filling your bathtub full of ice and jumping in. What that means is taking a container big enough for you to submerge your hand up to your wrist into, if it's your wrists and your wrists and your hands that are flared, and same with your feet, for your feet and ankles. Find, you know, a container that's about yay, yay big, good enough to, to put some ice in. You put as much ice as you can in that thing and then you add some water and you submerge your hands in it and let those soak for again about 20 minutes pull them out now you're going to most likely your inclination is going to be to just put your hand in and not move it no 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 you got to move those fingers around again that's something i learned in a physiotherapy clinic years ago and i swear by it today still if my hands and wrists and feet and ankles are sore i will use that i will submerge them into an ice bath like I say, do it for about 20 minutes, pull them out. I like to do that multiple times a day as well. If you can do it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening again, you're laughing. Now this next tip is one that some people swear by, some people say, no, it doesn't work for me, but that's ointment. I have a couple of ointments that I do use when I flare. The old standby, A535, it really does help me. If nothing, if for nothing else but the muscles, it helps to relax the muscles. I often will still, even though I'm in remission, I will still get headaches caused from my neck um, and my shoulders. I have RA in my shoulders and uh, also in my neck. So I will oftentimes get my wife to massage this into my neck um, at night and that really helps. Now, I don't know how many of you have used Voltaren. Um, again, you know, the jury's kind of split on this one as to whether or not it does work. I have found it does. What I find works really, really well with these is to first do your ice bath and then put this on afterwards. And also if you can wrap that, that sore joint in a tensor bandage or your splint, that's the time to use it. So ice bath, ointment, splint, perfect. Yeah, that will help a lot. It really has over the years helped me. Sometimes I'll couple that even with some Tylenol. If it's, you know, if the aching is just excruciating and I can't get any relief, I will take Tylenol. So, ointments. Check them out. Voltaren, A535, Deep Cold. I don't know, there's all kinds of different ones out there. So let me know in the comments below if you have an ointment that you use and it works. It could be controversial. Some people may agree with it, some people may not, but I'm gonna talk about it. I'm actually gonna do another video where I go into further detail about these products. But here in Canada, cannabis has been legalized. Uh, it was legalized last summer, I believe it was. And yeah, so I had never ever in my life tried a CBD or a THC, anything like that, anything cannabis based. So I went out and I got a few different products to try. Like I say, it's legal here in Canada. So I went to one of our dispensaries and first I got just a CBD THC tincture. So it's an oil that I squirt underneath uh, my tongue or just shoot it to the back of your throat. I wash it down with something 
you know, like a drink of water or whatever, because it does kind of have that cannabis taste to it. It's got kind of a skunky taste. Um, but this next one, oh, and I'm not sure, let me see what the percentage of this is. Like I say, I am gonna go into further detail on these things. This next one is, it's a spray. Also, it goes, it goes under, you just give it a squirt in your mouth. Again, I really like this one as well and have, I have honestly, folks, I have found it to work. Um, some of you that follow me on social media, if you do, please do, there's the info. Um, a few weeks ago on social media, I had shared that I inadvertently got my Humira injection weeks wrong. For whatever reason, somehow I mixed it up and I missed my Humira by a week. So I went into a bit of a flare, enough that I could feel it. And I thought, well, now is actually the perfect time to test these products really well. So I did. I tried this one and I gotta say guys, it honestly, honestly worked. So yeah, if you're using these products, let me know again in the comments below. Let's start talking about it. During a flare, you are most likely going to be tired. You're gonna be, you're gonna have increased fatigue because your body's in a lot more pain. It takes a lot more work to do stuff. So you're going to be tired. My suggestion is to rest as needed, guys. If your body needs rest, then do it and don't feel bad about it. You are basically in a battle at that moment with your body, with your immune system, and, and you need to rally the troops and be as strong as you can. So that probably is going to mean resting more than usual. But on the flip side of that, the other thing that you were likely going to want to do is cocoon and just kind of curl in on yourself and not see anybody, not go out. You're in pain, you're feeling horrible. You don't want to see people. However, over the years, I have found, you know, by about day three, if things are starting to feel a little better and I'm not as tired and sore, then I will try and go out with friends and just be around people, even if it's just for a coffee or, you know, a simple, have somebody come over and just sit and chill and watch TV. Over the years, I really did find that that helped. Like I say, distraction also helps to get your mind off of the pain that you're feeling. Well, there you go, everybody. There's my survival kit for getting through your next rheumatoid arthritis flare. I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, please comment below and ask me. I will always answer anything and everything. If you're not already following me on social media, please do, because I post all kinds of stuff on there as well over, you know, the weeks, days, whatever. I try and post as much info as I can. Anything I read that I find interesting, I share it along to you guys. So check me out on social media as well. All right, everybody take care. I hope you're doing fantastic. And I will see you later. Everything is wrong, you feel like it's your fault